Tervetuloa Asso 36 Berliiniin, jossa meillä on haastattelussa legendaarisen Saturikonin rumpali ja pitkäaikaisjäsen Frost. Uh, welcome to SO36 Berlin, where I have Frost from the legendary Saturicon with me. Uh, you started touring in wake of your new album last month. How has the tour been so far? I think that I can say without a doubt that uh, this must have been the best club tour we've done in our career hitherto. It's just a little after plus 25 years, I suppose. Um, lots of people are coming to the shows. Uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm. We see that our shows are being greatly appreciated. We feel connection with the crowds. We feel electric energy and magical moments basically every night out. Uh, and most of all, it's very exciting for us in the band to play the new songs live. Um, we have a very deep respect for the spirit and the attitude in those songs and bringing that through in a live environment is something that is quite challenging but also very inspiring for us to do so like all the components for a good tour are, are really in place okay as said uh you released the uh, album uh, deep call it you bone deep last month what can you tell us about that album to me it's an album which has an abundance of everything there's a there's a much of of all that constitutes Satyricon um, and I regard it as an album that uh, has the majestic and epic feelings of Satyricon it's an album that has the melancholy and the Nordic uh, and Norse folk tones uh, it's an album that has the hatred and intensity and grim anger that Satyricon sometimes display um, and there is uh, there is darkness and there is light there is so much of everything and also I feel that it is kind of transcended to a new dimension on this album uh, it's an album that to me is much more alive than any earlier Satyricon album in the sense that it is uh, more dynamic, it has a richer musical palette and where we kind of scratch the surface uh, bringing in dynamics on, on the previous album uh, we are really digging quite deep on this new album uh, and to me it has ended up being something that is very soulful and spiritful and magical and and, um, and very very rich yeah there's also been a lot of talk about the album cover how did the edward Munch uh, drawing end up as the cover Steer so the drawing by monk uh, in spring this year actually um, and it was uh, a monk drawing that he hadn't seen before and he he got access to, to that work uh, more or less through coincidence by getting to see this this um, web catalogue of Moon pictures and as he saw it he just felt, felt this immediate connection he realized that he was actually staring at the cover right there and then uh, the cover is like a visual representation of the music it's raw and naked it's quite simple and direct in a way but also you feel that it's very soulful and expressful um, and it has mystery to it there is drama and tension um, there is darkness and something very twisted and slightly uncanny and, and scary uh, and it's very very special and you feel that you are are staring at something with a very particular expression so it's basically everything that the music on the album is and the way that it comes together uh, was what really made it become the cover. It needed to be that. Uh, last year you released the 20th anniversary edition of Nemesis Divina. Uh, what kind of feelings and thoughts does it bring up when you think about the days of dark medieval times, Shadow Throne and Nemesis Divina? 
Well, the time span from Dark and Dale Times to Nemesis Divina was a very happening one. Uh, I, I cannot say that there was, you know, one particular feeling that is being significant for for a period rather it's it's the development and the evolution that took place in ban uh, the nemesis period for example was one where uh, we really started to sense that conquering spirit of the ban uh, it was also the album where we started to do live shows which we hadn't done actually before that album we got uh, we got nocturnal culto into the ban um, which was also something that had had a pretty deep spiritual impact, uh, honestly, uh, if nothing else. Uh, and, um, and and we really started to feel that we were we were heading somewhere, and that is something that we were reminded of when we when we reissued the the album for that anniversary last year and also when we performed the songs live we got in touch with that quite wild and youthful energy of the album which was something that I didn't really remember properly until I started to actually play the songs so that was that was an interesting experience actually uh, yeah, uh, Satyricon's music has been a sort of endless debate. How would you describe the evolution of your music through the years? Yeah, I, I will actually describe it as evolution. Proper evolution. I think that as a band that is founded on creativity and pioneering spirit and on innovation, uh, you will have to expect a lot of development to happen. Uh, it's bound to and we have always tried to stay clear of set formulas we have disregarded uh, expectations and external pressure we have always been our own leading star uh, and I think that with all kinds of creative expressions that that will by nature evolve and find uh, new fields of, um, of expression and then, uh, then there is you know just a natural thing that uh, some debate follows lots of conservative souls out there will hear an album and like it and then they expect everything else to be very very similar to that uh, while well, we in the band say that no, that's not how it's going to be with Satyricon. There are tons of bands around there that do exactly that, which is a very commercial thing to do anyway. Uh, but we're not about that. Uh, we have a much greater plan with Satyricon. Some people will follow us in that journey, others will not, and that's going to be okay. We will not regard of it. Okay, and lastly, uh, what does black metal mean to you, and has the meaning changed over the years? The idea and the principle is unshaken by what is actually happening to the genre. I think of the genre as, as a living organism, but the core idea and the, and the principle is like a root that will, you know, remain in the ground and uh, perhaps grow a little bit, but it will, it will pretty much be unchanged. But what happens above ground, which is, you know, how humans actually treat the genre, that is something that is growing. It will, it, it will go in all kinds of different directions. Uh, and if there is no evolution happening, if there is no development in the genre, then it will wither and die, you know, just just like a living organism would do. Uh, and like the musical core idea of this genre to me is uh, is kind of metalized darkness, and there's no meaning to the word if it isn't rooted in in metal music. And I think of it as a genre that uh, that is extreme and pushing boundaries. Uh, uh, and it wouldn't make sense if it wasn't having some 
kind of darkness to it because that's that's what the name of the genre is meant to imply so i think of it as a genre that in a way is defined in the same way as blues and punk it's about feeling and it's about attitude and it's about spirit if it's there uh, there is something true and real about it uh, and if it's not there it's not proper and that whole real debate truly revolves around that to me while other genres are perhaps uh, defined by more technical aspects like you know guitar sound vocals uh, whether it's whether it's fast or not and all that kind of thing black metal is like it's like punk more like about the attitude it could be lots of different things it could be closer to heavy metal or it could be closer to death or trash or something that is more typical lo-fi and screeching it could be ambient it could be extremely violent and fast but at the end of the day it's about that attitude and spirit okay uh, how do you see the state of the genre at the moment and how do you see its future i I have no opinion on that. Uh, I think that what we do through Satyricon is telling so much more than what I can state through some words or, or some opinions. I think we're, we're trying to lead the way instead of moaning about the condition of things or trying to tell what it should be like. We are so lucky that we have our own channel of uh, having an impact on where we are going. Okay, thank you very much and break a leg tonight.